Um, so the, the, the short answer is yes, but not yet. Uh, my only concern of people trying to push it now is that when you have a verifiable community, when you can actually show a community acting together, then it can't be disputed. But we're right in the process of turning these things on, and I, I would say to you it's premature to be able to call in and uh, use your membership as an underwriting back into the Roman system. But in the short term, like in weeks' time, in a couple of months' time, yes, absolutely. Let me go to the next caller, and it's uh, Alpha 999 again, and, and then we'll come back to uh, questions on the chat. Okay. Uh, one sec. One sec. I'm getting there. Uh, by the way, I was asked, uh, Alpha 999, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Um, my next question, uh, Frank, is um, on land and uh, the recording of land on the promised land record within Eucadia. Um, if you um, had a, if, if uh, well, if I have a, 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 a piece of land that I'm looking at that's cr c currently crown land, that what procedure would I do? Would I record it first on the promised land record and then start uh, uh, dealing with the uh, Roman system, notifying them of my intentions? What would you do if you were doing a procedure that had no claims against? I looked it over; it had no claims. What would you do? What per, uh, line of uh, what, or chain of command or or procedure would you take? Yeah, good, great point. Um, what what I would do is. Um, the last thing I would do once everything is perfected uh, is, is effectively give notice to their land system and submit uh, the cadastra. That is, submit the yeah. survey, submit the enclosure, submit the deed, um, and then let, let them uh, object. What, uh, what their system... Okay, so what, what we're doing is for land is, is the following. Um, the promise land record uh, is uh, a certificate um, that proves a right that you have, and that is that, uh, a right of, of ownership of land. Now, what this promise land record does, along with your live born record, is the two of them together prove that you hold real property. You hold uh, the property of the, obviously, the, of the mine, you hold the property of the body, you hold the property of the spirit, and will contest title to anyone that challenges that. And secondly, the promised land record um, proves that you are given a God-given right to the land, yeah? And no one can challenge that either. And that itself is, is property, right? Yeah. Now, with that then, you then stake a claim and you survey that claim. And so you then perform a proper survey. And the survey is a, is, um, a ritual. Uh, it needs to be done with witness. It needs to be recorded um, uh, as a proper um, survey. And then that needs to be um, connected to a claim and the claim being um, then a formalised um, document as well. And then the combination of those two things uh, are then recorded, and they are recorded in in a land register, and the land register of Eucadia is a land register that claims superior title to the Roman system. So the last thing you would then do through that process is then give notice to the Roman system of valid title that is extracted from the. UKD system along with the survey extracted from the UKD system and then put into their system as a valid deed, right? Yeah. I mean, when you uh, hire a surveyor who has a, you know, is able to do a casadial survey, and they're going to be doing some research within that system, you know, the history of that. And they're certainly, even their survey is going to start notifying them of what's going on. Is that not... Would you not think that would be the case? Okay, there's two. There's, yeah, look, the the the, the surveyors uh, who you quite rightly say now 
perform, you know, and earn their living being staying compliant within the Roman system, the same as accountants do, the same as lawyers do. Yeah. They're canaries. They're supposed to yeah. shirk in, at the first sign of a threat, right? Exactly, yeah. Um, what I'm referring to as a survey is a classic survey. This concept that they go out with their tri, uh, tripods and, and do a, a, a laser sighting from point to point is totally unnecessary. That, that, is not, that is not a valid survey. A valid survey is you start from a, a mark, a point, a boundary, a recognised boundary, and then you travel, being able to define the distance you travel and the direction you travel. And then notice that you come to a point and that point is identified by some identifiable mark. They used to use pegs. And then you change direction. And then you walk another distance. And what you're describing then in words is the classic survey. Now, whether it's done with um, the instrumentation of a um, uh, civil engineer survey going out there and, and doing it to do laser sight within a couple of centimetres, or whether it's done within a couple of feet, is actually immaterial. The original principle of survey predates the Roman cult anyway. It's a Gaelic system created by a guy called Cormac MacArthur, whom they stole the identity of and created the concept of King Arthur. I mean, this is the guy that invented the process, and it's a ritual first, yeah? Right. So in, in UK, we want to obviously be precise. Uh, you can't usurp land that is uh, presently um, you know, occupied, but you can certainly uh, reclaim your own land and you can certainly uh, claim land that is not being utilised. And for the Indigenous people, there is a very important process to do this as first claim, to reclaim their heritage. But it's done through the ritual. And in the case of the Indigenous populations, when they do that survey, they are actually surveying the boundaries of a temple, of a place of worship and ceremony. Right. And when they do that, they are enclosing that land yep. against any claim of the Roman cult because that land is under use, perpetual use, non pro tongue from the beginning in terms of it being a land, a place of worship and ceremony. And when they do that, and they have that uh, lodged and acknowledged, and then that is perfected in trust, then I assure you the Roman cult is going to find that their claims of land, which is trickery and presumption, um, is secondary. At the end of the day, um, the Roman cult system of land itself is an outrageous claim. So um, if we're going to challenge, we're going to challenge title, we're really saying the other thing, prove to me, rather than going to them and saying, I submit humbly for your approval my uh, land claim and go to them and say the other way. Prove right. to me you have a legitimate claim. Yeah? Right. Go on, Vatican. Prove to me you have a legitimate claim. And if you don't, then no claim will be regarded as valid. And the, uh, within the, the um, court site or uh, the assistance to bringing this matter to whatever court in the Eucadia, we could get some exactly. assistance. Exactly. Under yeah. any form of law, under any logic, yeah. prove to me your legitimate claim. If you can't prove to me your legitimate claim, that it's not a claim based on outrageous lies, like we're all creatures, if you can't prove it to me, then you have no legitimate claim. Right. I don't care if you've got a 500-year-old land register. It's worthless, useless. Yeah. Well, this one's pretty clean. It's uh, there's nothing on it. I checked it out. There's there's nothing. Yeah. Only thing is, there's a, a logging company has a claim on the lumber, but that's a corporation. So, um, there was another oh. thing you mentioned. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Um, there was another thing you meant. You mentioned constructive notice. Where is that on the site? Do you have mentioned? Uh, that? Not there yet. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, good. But what and, I was... um, yeah, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I I actually got in trouble. Someone said I sh I on the call on the top there that I interrupted the questioner there. So I, I'm sorry. I was just interrupting. But what um, 
what I was saying before is that we will have a, a section there on what is constructive notice. But above and beyond constructive notice, I use the example that in the Roman system, when a government agency wishes to promulgate a new policy, they don't go through the extent we do. They simply go to a gazette, pay money, publish it, and it's a fact. Yeah. So what they've been doing is getting us to run a marathon when they walk down and buy a quart of milk. I mean, they've yeah. been getting us to, to, to go above and beyond, and even then they don't recognize it. Yeah, I know there were some people up in the Yukon territories that had some uh, cabins and whatnot, and they would just put a two-week notice on the in the paper, and they would tear the cabins down. Well, they didn't. Of course, the people didn't make any real attempt to claim the land, but the, that's all they have to do. They just put a put an ad in the paper. It seems that they just it's presumptions beyond presumptions. Yeah, that's exactly right. Well, um, I hope I answered those did, questions and comments for you. Yeah, I did want to say one thing. Thanks to Ray from East Pennsylvania for further answering to my question last week because he did answer a little further, and I appreciate that. No, good, and I'm sorry that I was remiss and they yeah, covered that. No, you thing. weren't, but, You weren't. but he just uh, he added to it, and I just wanted to thank him for that. Good on you. Well, thank thanks you. again. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll get to the next caller, Montana, and then we'll look at uh, more questions in the chat. Uh, Montana, can you hear us? Hi, Frank. It's Dawn. How are you? Hello. How are you, Dawn? Hey. Good. Hey. By the way, I heard all your information. I have everybody out here. We amended in, uh, by using a notice all the titles on our previous documents. So thank you for that information so they can't throw out our forms. Right. So I wanted to let you know that. Now, talking about agency, I had an interesting situation. I was in a hearing, and... Um, Basically, what's happened is I had a dispute with a credit card company, and the credit card company, not once, not twice, never answered my debt validation or dispute, yet they acknowledged they received it. Never heard from them again. I had paid for an insurance payment protection plan. Uh, they wouldn't send me the proper forms when I got sick. You know, they took all the money. They wouldn't adjust my account, and then I disputed it. Um, this was like a year ago. And basically, they sent me a letter. We got your validation letter. They told me to cut up the card. Never heard from them. Then this debt collecting attorney summons me. And so I've been putting in motions to get it dismissed based on lack of standing and that they didn't validate and things like that. But at this hearing with the judge's clerk, the law clerk, um, I did my thing with that. I stated I did not waive any of my rights and that I objected that, that, uh, that um, he did not have standing as this was still disputed and never properly answered. And went through all that, had her amend the record. I asked her, you know, do I have the right to a fair hearing? And she never answered. We got to the end of the hearing. I had her amend the court record and um, that my appearance did not support that this plaintiff had standing. I signed, I had her amend the signature line, I went ahead and signed, and the order went through for scheduling. Then she said to the plaintiff's attorney on the phone, would you like me to sign for you, Charles? And I'm thinking, wait a minute here, at what point, it was never disclosed to me, that there was an agency relationship and that she could legally bind that document on his behalf. Is there a conflict of interest here? Yes, it was there after is. I Absolutely. signed it. Huh? Absolutely. I, I think what we've, what we've missed, look, there's so much to learn, as you know, but when mm -hmm. it comes down to it, it's the once you've got the knowledge, then you can express the knowledge, certainly in face to face. And we know that once you become a formidable and, and competent adversary, they, uh, they, they seek to avoid confrontation, right? And well, then... I called the attorney and um, I said, by the way, I'd like to see the agreement that you have with the law clerk as I will be asking for that in evidence and certainly when I go to appeal this, should this move forward in this court, uh, because it looks like you collaborated and were in collusion. You had an int intimate relationship with this particular law clerk. Click, he hung right up on me. 